Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining the Animal Welfare Group Nigeria from wherever you are streaming from. And uh, I am Dr. Iyasiri Oluwa Shionsira. I am an associate professor at the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, Nigeria, and currently on the Alexander von Humboldt Fellowship in Berlin, Germany. Uh, you are highly welcome to the Animal Welfare Group Nigeria. This group was founded in the year 2019 after the gathering of students and researchers um, who were interested in animal behavior and welfare. And since then, we have really grown to over 90 members from 22 different affiliations in the country. The mission of the group is to increase awareness of animal behavior and welfare in Nigeria, Africa, and the world at large. Secondly, is to foster collaboration and networking among researchers who are in the field of animal behavior and welfare. And our third mission is to educate the public on the importance of animal welfare. Today we have uh, Dr. Aminu Shitu in our midst. He's our guest speaker, and uh, he will be presenting on the topic multivariable analysis of morphological traits influencing stature in Shokoto Gudali cows the implications for cow welfare and management practices. And today our moderator is uh, Barnabas Babalola. He just graduated uh, from the Department of Animal Production and Health. So he will be moderating today's session. Thank you so much for joining us. I will we'll, we'll be glad to have you engage actively today by dropping your questions in the chat. And we will take the questions immediately after the presentation. All right. Um, thank you very much, Mark, for that um, brief introduction. OK, my name is um, Barnabas Babalola, and I'm a graduate of the Federal University of Agriculture from Animal Production and Health Department. Uh, before we begin today's um, webinar, I would like to uh, introduce our speaker to us. Amino Shitu developed his early interest in biology through observing birds insects and helping with cows on the family dairy farm, which is now defunct. He obtained a doctor of veterinary medicine degree from Usmanu Danfodio University, Shokoto, Nigeria, and later worked in both private and government sectors as a veterinary officer post-graduation before joining the faculty of veterinary medicine at Udu, Shokoto as a lecturer. He received a postgraduate certificate in international animal health at the College of Medicine and Veterinary Medicine, University of Edinburgh, Scotland, under the Commonwealth Scholarship and Fellowship Plan, CSFP. He also obtained, he also obtained a Master's of Science in Control of Infectious Diseases in Animal Epidemiology and Statistics jointly offered by the Royal Veterinary College and the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, University of London, under the CSFP. Aminun has a strong research interest in quantitative epidemiology, farm animal health, and global health. His works in these areas are published in top-rated journals. Dr. Aminun Shitu has a range of experiences and accomplishment in the fields of veterinary medicine, public health, and epidemiology. His work highlights the importance of interdisciplinary collaboration in addressing complex challenges, and his personal interests reflect his curiosity and dedication to learning and making a positive impact. Without wasting much of our time, I would like to introduce our speaker uh, for his talk. Thank you very much. Uh... Dr. Sharon Yasere for having me. Thank you, Barnabas, for introducing me. Uh, thanks to the uh, Animal Welfare Group Nigeria for giving me an opportunity to present uh, uh, part of my uh, research work, which is ongoing. So uh, the large project is a project on cow welfare and good health. So this is part of it. And my topic as uh, as it was read by Barnabas, my topic is multivariable analysis of morphologic traits influencing stage two in Sokoto Gudali cow, uh, looking at the implications for welfare and management practices. 
And my name is Samir Shit once again. My areas of research interest quantitative epidemiology, farm animal health, and global health. And I included a link there to my uh, university profile for a better understanding of, uh, well, there is a lengthy biography there. And then you link to Google Scholar for more information about my uh, publications. And so in introduction, uh, it is, I felt that it is good to begin by introducing the breed that we are going to uh, be talking about, the Sokotogudali cows, which is vital to the northwestern part of Nigeria. It is indigenous to this part of the country. The word Gudali is a Hausa term that was, yeah, it's, uh, the word was coined from the Hausa language, which means short-horned or short-legged animals. And they're also known as Fulbe or Pehulzebu in West and Central Africa because the distribution of the breed uh, is, uh, is beyond the uh, northwestern part of the country, as you can see in the map there. And their origin is believed to be from the Indo-Pakistani Zebu, which spread across Africa by uh, Arabian traders. And the distribution, uh, generally distribution, uh, physical characteristics of this breed and peculiarity, uh, they, are they are classified under the Sahelian Zebu breed and five strands exist. So we have Sokoto Budali, breed here. All of them are Gudalis. The Adama Gudalis in the northeast, you have the Banyo Gudali, Yola Gudali, and Ngaundere Gudali. I think that is in uh, Cameroon. So these names are given based on the uh, the place where they are popular, or where they inhabit. So we have the Dr. Gudali, uh, which is named after our uh, geographical region. So Sokoto Gudali is found, is predominantly found in Nigeria, Northern Benin, Ghana, and Mali. And they have variation in their coat color. But that is the type that we have uh, here. And this is from one of the farm that, that I work with, or that I'm, yeah, that I work with uh, when I was collecting my data. And they are hardy animals, considering their, their uh, geographical location is, is a hot zone of the country, and ma majority of them are owned by Fulani and Hausa pastoralists. Next slide utility and breed status. They are known for meat and milk production. You can see that it is obvious with them, their body condition score ranges between one to nine, so they are for beef production, and that is the uh, average weight for uh, male and for female, high quality beef, as I mentioned, and they, they have the highest main total milk yield among indigenous breeds in Ghana. The uh, reproductive, uh, reproductive performance are uh, good. The age at first Calvin and Calvin intervals are short. The population estimate, this is an old statistics by DAD, IS in 2005. I need an update on that. So it says 4,400,000 in Nigeria and 10,000 in Ghana. The breed is not at risk of extinction. I think if I look through my window here, I should be able to see some of them uh, walking around by the roadside. And that is the predominant breed, especially among uh, the small scale milk producers in the household. And next slide is statue. So now I would like to introduce statue first, uh, which, is, which is a key indicator in livestock. Uh, so statue can also be uh, uh, another name for that is height of an animal, height at withers. And it is a fundamental morphologic trait, of course, because of its, it has a significant implications for livestock production and management. And it serves as an indicator of overall body size, the architecture of the animal, uh, skeletal structure, and the potential productivity. And understanding factors that influence statue is essential for optimizing breeding programs and in, in enhancing animal welfare and in improving management practice. So the uh, here is just in summary the 
objective of this study is to investigate the multifactorial influences on statue in uh, Sokotogudali cows through a multivariable statistical method of morphologic traits for welfare and management insights, uh, trying to make sense out of that and to all, and ultimately uh, the findings will provide valuable insights into the welfare implication and the management strategies related to a uh, statue in this breed of cattle. Next slide, methods, methodology, how we did it. We collected uh, data, data on quantitative data. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to make a uh, uh, morphologic traits. We focused on mo morphologic traits. So our data is based on uh, visual examination, visual characteristics, and overall appearance of the animal. That is morphology. I'm trying to differentiate morphology with morphometry here. So morphology is focused on visual characteristics and overall appearance, whereas morphometry involves the the quantitative measurements using measuring tools like ruler and califers. Uh, so you do some measurements of specific anatomical features and that provides more detailed and objective data for research and breeding purposes in cattle. So we collected data on various morphologic traits uh, of 820 Sokolok Dali cows uh, during a six month period of time so the project span for six months between uh, from June to November 2023. And uh, we collected data here in this part of the country uh, from four different locations, from different farms that we recruited into the study, household, uh, market, and slaughterhouse. Well, single market and single slaughterhouse. So uh, I forgot. Yeah, those is uh, not supposed to be there. And so the traits that we recorded include the age of the animal, age of the cow, how we how we age the cow, it was through dentition, but we collected uh, information about uh, age only from a uh, cow at farms and at household, because those ones can easily be estimated uh, by the owners. And some we also estimate them by ourselves using the dentition and parity also, which tends to uh, correlate with the age of the animal. So we also have that information uh, from the uh, animal owners at farm and at household level. So at market and at slaughterhouse levels, we are unable to, 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 to estimate the age and parity because of the situation, the operating uh, condition of those places especially in the slaughterhouse, we also collect information. We collected information on the body condition score, and there is a way to do that. So here it ranges between one to nine. And we also collected information about the chest with the body depth of the cow. Uh, next slide, still on data collection. We collected information on various, uh, I mean, on other traits include uh, uh, stress, stressness of design, SD. You can see that over there, I use photos here for uh, easy understanding uh, because we don't have time to explain them. And so we also collected information uh, on ROM slope, the, the rear leg side view, RLSV, the, the foot angle, and the hooves. So all of them, we recorded them at uh, uh, on ordinal scale, so some on well for height, uh, the height at Weavers, which is the statue, we recorded that in centimeters. So that is a, a quantitative variable, but all other ones, uh, well, age also, and the body condition score ranges between one to nine. So all of them and the rest of them are on ordinal scale. For the for the hoof, uh, that is the classification of the of the American Angus Association, the different type of hooves, which ranges from uh, one to nine and the claw. But uh, in our own case, we use the, on a tree scale basis where we said 
uh, a hoof is, is longer or is intermediate or is short. So based on visual examination and we trained only two people. So only two people, two students uh, conducted this assessment in order to avoid uh, uh, observer bias. And next slide. The next slide is the is my data set. Here is my data set, uh, 15 different variables, how uh, the names of each and every variable, how I coded them uh, uh, in the Microsoft Excel, and the description of each and every variable, and the type of measurement on each and every uh, variable. So next, data analysis. Next slide. Uh, so here, I conducted uh, univariable and multivariable analysis, and basically that is a uh, linear regression model. So uh, in the beginning, after doing all the data cleaning, checking and corrections for typographical errors, I ran, yeah, that is what I did within the Microsoft Excel environment. And then I transferred my data set into the statistical software. I'm biased at Stata, so I'm using Stata. First of all, I run descriptive and summary statistics for understanding of the distribution of my variables. And then I check for, I assess the normality using statistical distributions. I mean, normality of my response variable, which is the, the, the statue of cow. And then I run Spearman's correlation analysis to look at the, uh, some uh, associations. Uh, I use a Spearman correlation analysis considering that uh, my, the, considering the ordinal nature of my variable, so the correlation with the height. And then I run a univariable analysis using linear uh, regression modeling uh, in order to understand the individual relationship between each uh, morphologic trait that we measured and the statue of a cow, which is our response variable or dependent variable, as uh, statisticians call it. Yeah, which is correct. And then multivariable regression modeling. And here I analyze the relationship between uh, all the morphologic traits and cow stage two. So I force them into a single model. And then the regression model was used to assess the impact of this variable, such as age, parity, body condition score, and so on on cow statue and that is the uh, uh on the right hand panel is the uh univariable regression model just a simple expression of that and the multivariable regression model as well with the definition of of all those uh, uh items in it next slide so the next slide is results. So basically here is the result of our correlation analysis, uh, Spearman's correlation analysis. And, uh, and so you can see some, uh, well, to make it easier, I did not include uh, everything. So this is the only one that I included for the purpose of this uh, presentation. Next slide. For the next slide here, I picked up uh, three variables and which are of importance in the correlation analysis. And to mention, to talk, uh, to talk briefly about them. And I mean, uh, what I have here is the result of the correlation analysis between the age and statue, which shows a, mod a moderate positive correlation. And that indicates that as the cow grow older, they also tend to have a slightly larger statue. And weak positive correlation was observed between the parity and the statue of a cow, which suggests that cows with high parity may have a slightly larger statue. And uh, number three, another result from the correlation analysis is that uh, there is a strong positive correlation between the age and parity. Well, this one is true. As the, we, as the cow gets older, uh, that also correlates with the number of cows or number of deliveries. Uh, well, yeah, it can never be negative. So 
that is that. What I presented in previous slides are results of the correlation analysis, and they say correlation does not imply causation. It only shows the uh, certain degree of association. So here I am interested in going further in doing the regression modeling, but uh, before we begin any re regression modeling, it is advisable to uh, start looking at the uh, start inspecting the response variable to to uh, to ensure that it met the assumption of a linear regression model. So here I run some statistical transformations, different statistical transformations, cubic transformation, square transformation, identity variable there. That is the raw variable of my uh, statue without uh, any transformation. Square root transformation, log transformation, one of our square roots, and inverse transformation, one of our square, and one of our cubic transformations. So uh, the essence of doing transformation, as I said, is to improve the accuracy and reliability of the results. Uh, that is encouraged. So upon all this uh, transformation that I ran, I found out that a square transformation uh, is the best based on histogram and quantile normal plots, which I, which I have shown here. And the distribution aligned with the assumption of linearity, homoscedasticity, and normality when you compare it with other transformations, as you can see. So in the univariable uh, analysis here, uh, I have some tables which cannot fit they cannot fit in here, but I only provided their interpretation. I think uh, definitely I must provide that in the publication, in any publication that is going to emanate uh, from this study. So the interpretation, what we found out uh, in univariable uh, linear regression modeling without adjusting for confounding, we discovered that age exhibits a positive linear relationship with statue. So coefficient of uh, 566.8 at that level of uh, that mm. probability level. And also parity shows a positive linear association. Uh, that is the coefficient and the level of significant uh, probability level is highly significant. It means a statue uh, increase with increasing age of a Sokrogudali car. And also, uh, statue uh, increase with the higher parity levels. Also for body condition score, I also find some uh, degree of association there, which shows a connection between body condition and statue of Sokrogudali cow. And also the chest width, uh, level two and level three, they affect statue of a cow. So it means as the chest width uh, increases, the statue of a cow also increases uh, with intermediate and white chest width. Uh, so these are the ones that are associated with uh, increased statue. Well, I use uh, level one as my baseline in the model and straightness of design or SD. Uh, level two also exhibit a significant negative association with statue, which indicates uh, decrease uh, statue. The result is not shown. And univariable model continues. Uh, I also found out that the ROM slope, level two and level three, they significantly affect statue with cows having a reverse or nearly level ROM slope showing uh, increased statue. And ROM width, level two and level three also significantly influence a statue with intermediate and wide ROM width associated with increased statue. And also the rear leg side view of a Sokrogudali cow, levels two and three, significantly affect the statue, with cows having an intermediate or sickled rear leg side view showing increased statue. And the foot angle, uh, levels two and three, also significantly influence the statue of a cow, with cows having an intermediate or steep foot angle showing increased statue. And also the hooves, uh, levels two and level three, which is uh, 
intermediate and all of our ground hoof. They also affect statue significantly with cows having uh, intermediate and long hooves showing increased statue. But mind you, this is uh, a univariable model without adjusting for any confounding variable. I also define those terms within the model. Okay, I can read it from here. Why is the response variable, which is the statue of the cow in centimeters? Well, it has already been transformed. So we say square statue here. And then we have the B not there, which is the intercept of the model. We have the betas there, beta one, is the coefficient for age. We have the beta two to beta five, which are the coefficient for body condition score, chest width, uh, straightness of design and rom slump, respectively. And E is the error term in regression model. So what I projected, what I included here in this regression, in this multivariable uh, regression model, these are the variables that survive in the final model. And those that uh, did not survive, I have to drop them down after adjusting for compounding uh, using likelihood ratio test and uh, the uh, comparison, making comparison between uh, full and reduced model. And next is the results. So here are some of the results of the final model where we found out that age exhibits a significant positive linear relationship with the statue of cow. And that is the coefficient. And at that uh, level of probability, which is uh, highly significant, less than 0 0.001, which indicate that as cows age, their statue tends to increase. And this agrees with the initial uh, univariable model. And that, we also saw some uh, uh, some degree of that in the correlation analysis. And but the parity after adjusting for confounding, it does not show any significant linear association with statue. So it was dropped out of the uh, multivariable model. And the body condition score level six and seven, which are the highest uh, scores in my data set, uh, they also have significant positive association with statue compared to the reference level, which is body condition score uh, number two. That is the minimum or the lowest level that we saw or that we have in our data set, which suggests that cows with high uh, body condition score values tend to have increased statue. And the chest width of a cow, level two and three, these are the highest. Uh, they do not exhibit a significant linear association with the statue after adjusting for confounding variables. However, they did for the uh, invariable model. And the straightness of design level two, which is straight, shows a significant negative association with the statue when we compare with the reference level. Uh, that is the reference level number one, which is sway design. So here is a two-level variable, sway back and straight back, suggesting so that cows with a high back tend to have decreased squared stature. And for the rom slope, rom slope, uh, slope, levels two and three show significant positive association with stature, with, which indicates that cows with a reverse or nearly level rom slope tend to have uh, increased statue. So here, after running my models, uh, the final model, multivariable model, then I evaluated my model using uh, a check information criterion and Bayesian information criterion. So these are statistical methods that we use in evaluating uh, the fitness of our model, because not all models are perfect. So here, the interpretation of the ACHEC information criterion and Bayesian information criterion, criterion, the values here suggest that the multivariable model, including age, parity, body condition score, chest width, uh, straightness, straightness of design, and wrong slum, strike a reasonable balance between the model fit and complexity. And these values support the significance of these variables in predicting statue in Sokto Budali cows. 
and the models of our role adequacy in explaining the observed data is affirmed by these collective measures statistically. So here is still part of the model validation. Here is the residual analysis, the showing the normal probability plot uh, and the histogram of residuals there. Uh, the, the, the characteristics here indicate uh, they are indicative of a reasonably normal distribution uh, observed, this analysis. And here for the lay people, and I provided some explanation here of the meaning of this uh, residual uh, normal probability plot and distribution of residuals. Uh, we know that residuals, uh, the differences between the observed and predicted, val predicted values are in the data set. So here we use a visual confirmation. So looking at it visually, we can say that the residuals closely align with the normal distribution. And, and, and the also interpretation based on the adequacy of our model it indicates that the model accuracy captures the variability in cow statue. And it also, uh, on reinforcing the uh, reliability, the statistical inferences drawn from the analysis, from this analysis, they are dependable uh, based on this uh, model validation and residual analysis. So here, I included uh, my last couple of slides include the implications of my findings here, implications for welfare management and housing practice. So what we have found out in this uh, analysis is that age and certain morphologic traits uh, significantly influence the statue of Sokoto Gudani cows. And we also discovered that there is a positive association with age and specific traits like the rum slum uh, indicative their role in determining cow statue. And the implication of this research on cow welfare is that uh, understanding these associations can lead to improved welfare practices, uh, specifically for this breed of cow. And also, tailored management strategies it can allow us to tailor our management practices for this breed, which include housing, housing considerations, uh, which can be developed to address uh, age-related changes uh, that are uh, age-related uh, changes and specific uh, morphologic traits in housing design for cattle. And implication on management practice is that breeding programs can incorporate knowledge of trade associations to select the, uh, I mean, for desired characteristics and also enhanced management practices, which include uh, nutrition and health care, which can optimize cow welfare and productivity. And in terms of housing uh, consideration, once again, housing design and facilities can also be adopted to accommodate the changing needs of cows as they age. And this makes sense. It is uh, like thinking about us, we human beings. We started uh, from cradle, from smaller beds. But as we are growing, the size of our beds are increasing. The size of the rooms are increasing. That should also uh, apply to cow. And proper housing can mitigate the impact of age-related changes on cow comfort and well-being as well. So uh, it doesn't make sense keeping a cow in the same dimension of a housing throughout her life. She needs expansion for uh, positive uh, welfare improvement, increased uh, productivity, and as well as comfort. I have read uh, some uh, research papers where uh, they reported uh, a lot of changes, uh, changes in milk output, milk production, uh, which was uh, enhanced in uh, on cows that are more comfortable uh, in larger housing, and and there is also an aspect of cleanliness also, which I'm not going to talk about here. It is part of uh, we have a data set for that, so I'm keeping it for uh, uh, for another time. So in conclusion, uh, incorporating age 
morphometric threats and housing considerations into management decisions can promote the overall welfare, health, and productivity of Sokto Gudali cows. So I'm mentioning Sokto Gudali cow here because it is the breed uh, in question. Uh, I'm not sure, I do not know, but it, this, my findings here on Sokto Gudali cow may be true in other breeds and in other clients. Uh, here are a list of some useful references. Of, of course, this I only listed uh, seven references here. So the list is not exhaustive. Uh, you should be able to find uh, more and updated references online. So this is only a guide. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Amino Shito, for that interesting presentation. Thank you for thank you. sharing insights on what your project as it relates to stature and uh, linear body dimensions in the Shokoto Gudali. I was just wondering uh, if you uh, have uh, an idea of what the descriptive statistics actually looks like. I, I just want to have an idea in the number of uh, animals you use, what proportion of them actually had um, a foot angle of maybe one or nine? Because today is my first time really, you know, uh, paying attention to what a uh, hoof angle looks like in <laughs> in cattle. So, what proportion was it like? Was do the 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 Shokoto Godali that you use were they more of having the hoof angle score one or or nine? Looking at the entire result here, I did not use the description of the American Angus Association, which ranges from one to nine. So I used uh, a scale of one to three. Okay. Yeah, so I used a scale of one to three, and which means either long, intermediate, or short. And here is the, I'm trying to get the table for the descriptive analysis for that. Got it already. So for the hoof, the shorter hoof, at 2.44% have shorter hooves, and uh, for 3.54 percent have uh, intermediate hooves, and long hooves are 24.02 percent. Is that what you want? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I'll hand over to the moderator to read the questions in the chat. Okay. All right, ma'am. All right, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Amino Shifto, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, let me check the chat box. Okay, from Dr. Mary Oluwashio. She's um, sending her greetings. I want to appreciate our dear presenter, Dr. Aminu Wadonsa, uh, asking, can we generalize these findings on whole cow varieties? Yeah, well, uh, that is what I said. Uh, I am, I'm very biased to uh, Sokto Gudali cow. You know, research, research is like searching in the dark. So for now, I will not be able to say that we can generalize these findings. Uh, that is one of my concluding statement. Uh, I mentioned that uh, findings are specific for Sokto Gudali cow in this part of the country. However, uh, these findings may, well, they may be the same or closely related or entirely different on a different breed of cow and in another uh, different environment. I have, uh, because uh, Sokto Gudali has a high frequency in my data set, 820 uh, cows. There are also other breeds that are included. Some of them are, in, I think there is a white Fulani breed is included in my data set. I think about 325 uh, white Fulani breeds uh, included in my data set. And also the red Bororos, and so, and I have not analyzed that data. I think uh, I may be able to see some, we may be able to see some difference. I'm not sure, but I have to have time to analyze that data. But as I said, uh, research is like uh, uh, searching in the dark. So we cannot say that this is what we are expecting and we may see something uh, different, yeah. All right, sir. Thank you very much, and sir. That's why we um, need to collaborate, yeah. Okay, sir. Um, another question here. 
uh, from Dr. Mary Luashim. Is there a way this research would be of help solving the hazards and crop farmers clashes in Nigeria? Uh, well, uh, that has to do with more of, uh, I think, uh, social sciences. You know, nowadays we are uh, research uh, interdisciplinary. We, that is the sense of doing collaboration. And there are a lot of uh, social science involvement in research, especially research in animal production, uh, farm animal health, and uh, with special consideration in uh, developing countries or uh, volatile regions, uh, like in situations where we have a farmer a harder crisis and stuff like that. So. I, uh, I don't see where this research is, is, is related with, uh, with that. This is only talking about uh, morphometry, morphology, and its impact on improving the welfare. Well, if we talk about the aspect of hard trauma, uh, a crisis, then uh, we may think about the aspect of nutrition there, how nutrition will impact the uh, body condition scoring system and the well-being of, of, of a cow. So uh, I will not say no. It is possible that uh, we can find uh, something interesting to discuss uh, as far as the uh, issue of uh, 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 farmer harder crisis is concerned. OK, sir. Thank you, sir. Another question here. Uh, but I think this is similar to one of the previous questions. But let's I'll still ask. Is this findings applicable to cows aside in Shukoto Gudali or basically for Shukoto Gudali? Well, there are a lot of research that have been conducted on other breeds of cow. So this is not, uh, uh, this research is not the first of its kind, uh, you know? So it has been conducted in other parts of the world on different breeds of animals in India, in Ethiopia, and even on white Fulani cow, uh, one of my, uh, uh, one of my, uh, one of the person that I talk with and one of my uh, advisors uh, is Professor uh, Mojid uh, at, the, uh, at the University of Lafia in Nasrallah State. He does a lot of work on this. In fact, that is uh, his specialty and, and, and I'm talking to him as well. So he has done a lot of work on morphology, morphometry, and I'm giving it a go for the first time. And uh, yeah, so this is not the first time and uh, it has been done on other breed of cows. Yeah. Okay, okay sir. Okay, sir. Uh, from Vivian, asking, I am from the Southern part of Nigeria. The breed we have is more of Muturu. Can this result apply to them? How can we use this in the genetic improvement? Thanks. I appreciate the presentation and presenter. Yeah, thank you very much for that question. I'm a member of Muturu Cattle Research Network. Uh, if she's interested, uh, I can uh, I can ask the professor there to add her on that WhatsApp group so that uh, she can uh, introduce herself there for better answers, but definitely it should be applicable. Uh, this question is similar to the previous one where I said, yes, uh, it can be applied to any uh, type of breed of cow. In fact, not only cow, it has been conducted on camels, on horses, on sheep and goats, on pigs, and even on poultry. So uh, morphology, morphometry, uh, yeah, it is applicable on on any species, on any breed. Okay, yeah. thank you, sir. Another question here, how those indices studied can be related to service behavior of Shukoto Gudali, especially in the news? To uh, behavior. I don't know if that. How is it related to mating behavior? Oh, oh yeah, mating behavior. Yeah, I think uh, that is one good aspect to, to to, to consider, um, yeah, in a presentation, you should expect any type of question. And a study, we can design a study that will specifically uh, answer this question. 
looking at uh, like all these threats that I have mentioned, how how they have impact on the mating behavior of a bull probably. And I think uh, even in the literature, such kind of things were reported, like the uh, fatness of a bull, which may, uh, uh, you know, have some, which may have uh, some interference on the uh, mating behavior and also the condition of hoof. Uh, well, lemness, uh, so all of those things. But uh, generally, I I know that uh, the condition of hoof can have uh, uh, a negative impact on, on, on that, on the mating behavior, and also the body size. But we can design a study that will specifically, uh, I mean, to specifically answer these questions. OK, all right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. From Dr. Oluashin Yasu, asking what is the implication of getting data from cows from different sources, such as farms, cows' food, market, and slaughterhouses, as this can mask the effects. Also, can you relate the stature to cow behavior? That's the question. Uh, well, I didn't get the first aspect. Is this the... Okay, let me what come again, sir. Yeah. What is the implication of getting data from cows from different sources, such as farms? Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the the implication, yeah, definitely we should expect some variations, uh, considering that the uh, especially well the the data the data set is quite large. So I only took a a small fraction of the data set. Uh, which consists of this uh, morphological trait. We also conducted some welfare assessment looking at uh, the cleanliness of cows, and we also have information about uh, uh, about the, the uh, physical injuries. And as I earlier said in the introduction there, uh, before making this uh, presentation public, we, we, we saw a lot of uh, differences between uh, cows uh, at the farms, cows at farms and at the household, they look similar. I mean, in terms of uh, clean, well, not in terms of cleanliness, I mean, in terms of uh, better or good quality welfare compared to those ones, uh, the slaughterhouse, which serves uh, like a dumping ground. So we keep healthier animals at home and at farms, we return them and for hard replacement while the sick ones and those with injuries are the one that uh, we have uh, uh, at the slaughterhouse and in the market. But uh, uh, I mean, yeah, I think, uh, I don't think, I never thought of uh, splitting this data set to say uh, this is the impact uh, of this trait on uh, cow statue among animals that are kept in the household or in the farms uh, and to compare them uh, with those in the slaughterhouse and, uh, and in the markets. I think uh, we may be able to see uh, some differences. That never came to my mind, but I think uh, for the welfare data set, uh, definitely we should expect to see something there. I mean, in terms of cleanliness, uh, in terms of uh, uh, presence of uh, some uh, abnormalities like uh, fracture and bruises and uh, uh, discharges, etc. So we may likely okay. see that. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, another question here: Can you relate this stature to cow behavior? Uh, related stature to cow behavior. Well, I'm not into behavior here. And there are a lot of things that may have a positive or negative impact on cow behavior. And I think uh, I mentioned during my presentation that how is been one of them. So if, if, if a cow is not uh, kept in a comfortable environment, 
uh, tight housing and also the dirty environment. So all of these things can have a negative impact on the behavior of a cow. Uh, I mean, the size of the housing, the cleanliness, and it can also affect the productivity of the cow indirectly, the uh, milk production, for example. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I think that's all for now. Uh, really appreciate your presentation. Thank you very much, sir. Over to you, Ma. All thank right. you. Thank you so much, Banaba. This is a good first attempt for you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for doing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Amino, I, why I actually asked the question, I think, you know, it will be, I know your aim is probably to get uh, a good sample size to be able to conduct this experiment. But probably yeah. it's also very important to have an idea of what this different category or sources of animal look like before you pull the data set together. Because yeah. of the opinion that, you know, we can even look at the, the effect of the different sources on these parameters before we pull it together. It will bring in more information to let us know uh, the welfare, at what point the welfare of these animals is really being, you know, compromised. Uh, uh, most. Now, uh, you also talked about uh, doing uh, in a, a trans the transformation of the data. Definitely, it means that the data was not normally distributed. The raw data was not normally distributed. So I, yeah. was, so I was wondering if you had looked at the outliers in that data, probably you, probably you may be able to have an idea of where the category of those animals, you know, were they from the slaughter? Probably they are the ones, you know, big, uh, had yeah. the, causing the outlier in the data now, if they are having yeah. a poor, I just, because that will really tell a, a good story of, of, of this, of these experiments. Yeah, that is, yeah, that's actually a good suggestion. I will look into that again. Yeah, I will, I will, I will have a look at that and I will run the model. Uh, using your suggestion. We have not, this is a preliminary study, as I mentioned, and I believe that uh, there are rooms for uh, improvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. Let me take note of it. So the part you turn on your video if you want, and if you want to give any further uh, comment or feedback, you can use the reaction button. Let's discuss now. This is time to discuss. You feel free to turn on your videos. It's time to discuss. It's time to interact. Yeah, and another the reason why I asked the question about whether you um considered stature and behavior because when I looked at the at the picture that you show about this uh, Shokoto Gudali, uh, you know, I, and probably what in the northern part is is a very hot place, so I want to believe that probably if um the chest gut, which was actually what you used to measure the the stature, right, the chest gut. Is yeah, it, we use uh, the chest. A wooden ruler. We measure the uh, height at withers. Okay, so height from back to the, yeah to the bottom there. Yeah. Now, what the what I what the, the way I think is that if the length of the height at wither is uh, short, that means the body of the animal is closer to the ground, and I think it may subject them to more heat stress, you know, from the from the uh, ground surface because the knot is, yeah. you know, is not, um, you don't really, it's, uh, what do they call it now? No much, you know, of grass and things like that. So they yeah. could be more susceptible to heat stress and th and this could affect their behavior in one way or the other. Yeah. And also, okay, yeah. yeah, that is a good question. But, and then if you look at another consideration is that I think uh, I did not mention the limitation of this study, uh, which is another thing to look at, is that the study was conducted uh, from the month of June to November uh, in 2023. And I think that was uh, during the rainy season. So we may also look at the possibility of uh, impact of se uh, season on behavior. So probably the performance may be better during the cold season compared to during the rainy and hot season, cold, dry season, warm, wet season, etc. So we did not take uh, seasonality into consideration uh, in this data set. Well, uh, that is if we are working on cow behavior. 
Okay. Do you want us to design another study on cow behavior? <laughs> no, I was just wondering, you know, for you to talk about the body stature or the stature of the animal, it has yeah. a whole lot to do with feeding, especially, and uh, management. So if yeah. it takes a whole lot of the proportion of the contribution, then the season yeah. will be uh, will be a, a major factor to consider. Now that you yeah. said that the data was collected during the rainy season, I want to yeah. believe the cows have, they had enough access to grasses and pasture. Now, you, yeah. you would, uh, I don't know if you will agree with me that we may not, uh, uh, we may not get the same uh, structure during the dry season because of the way, you know, forage, you know, may not be available and things like that. And also the animals may need to be worked for a long time in order to get access to, to, to feed resources. Yeah, and I think we also have to take uh, management type into consideration. So like for cows in the farm, that is an, I mean, intensive, intensive system of management. And in the household, uh, it is semi-intense intensive, they tend to go out for grazing, especially during the rainy season, and then they come back home. And I have not done uh, research on cattle that is uh, completely on extensive system of management, like, like the pastoralist cattle, pastoralist cow, which is completely on extensive system. Uh, maybe we may see some uh, variation compared to animals that are completely on pasture based or uh, that are under uh, seclusion, I mean, intensive system of uh, management. Can you please give us just one parting word about uh, the prospects in, uh, potential prospects in um, cattle welfare? Uh, yeah, there is a, a prospect, honestly, and it is all about being very serious about what we are doing and also investing time and energy and dedication as well. And, and that is just what we need. You look at a country like Netherlands. I work at Utrecht University uh, uh, looking at the dynamics of intramammary infection in, in sheep. So uh, Netherlands is a small country, and what is the population? But so everything is uh, is dedication. When we are the we 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 can say that we are the world largest in cattle production, and so if we put a lot of uh, seriousness in here in there, and I have a reason for choosing uh, this 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 pathway uh, as my area of uh, specialty, although I have. My area of interest is, is very broad, but uh, I see a lot of prospects in on the aspect of uh, cow welfare because uh, this there, there are a lot of economic gain uh, from that if we seriously invest on it uh, in terms of uh, productivity and meat and milk and also the product that we will derive uh, from cows. And, and there's no way we can uh, get those benefits if we do not invest on their welfare and the aspect of welfare is very large, uh, all encompassing. We have to look at uh, a lot of things uh, going uh, beyond the housing and nutrition, uh, the aspect of healthcare as well. Uh, so I can say that uh, the, the, the issue related to welfare uh, is, is everything about car. So uh, we need to uh, take note of that. Thank you so much. So that's a big prospect. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. And with that, I say bye-bye for now. Bye and have a lovely day wherever you are. Thank you very much.